What's up, Bravehearts community? This is Sean Heineman here with another segment of It's Scary to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. And today I have a special guest with me, good friend, Matt Walker. I want to let you know how uh, I only bring the best on, right? <laughs> Matt is amazing. I'm, I'm going to talk about this more as well, but I do want to talk to Matt about how to maintain uh, your marriage during this difficult season of COVID, right? We have so much going on with, um, you know, being in the house and mask and, and vaccines. We got so much going on, but behind that, there's also the relationship aspect and how it uh, plaguing marriages and relationships and people trying to figure out how to navigate through this. So. Um, yeah, Matt, thanks again for being a guest on the show, man. I appreciate you taking time out today. Tell the Bravehearts community about a little bit about yourself and what you do. Absolutely, man. And thank you so much for having me. Um, so my name is Matt Walker. I have been married for nine years. I have been with my wife for 13 years. I am what you would call a marriage enthusiast. Um, I love marriage. I love everything about it. Uh, what it's taught me, what I've had to shed from myself in order to grow and to get to where we are now. And I am predominantly, um, I use the social media app Clubhouse. Um, my moniker is King Midas. And I really just host spaces and rooms where we can have honest conversations. We talk about what marriage looks like today. And as well as just talking about what our responsibility as men looks like in today's world as well. And my goal is really just to shed what the truth is. You know, I feel like there's just so many misconceptions out there. A lot of them have come from society. A lot of them have come from our own personal experiences. But it's really time to just let all of that go and just talk to people about what marriage actually is about, what that partnership really looks like, and hopefully changing and being a part of the change for the next generation, honestly. Yeah, man, for sure, because I had a chance to connect with you on Clubhouse. And yeah. uh, I'm like, man, so Brave Hearts, go make sure you check out Matt. And I want to make sure that you give out your information at the end as well. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, people who are listening or watching, they can get in on the club. So let's jump into this because I don't want to waste any of your time. I've been so excited <laughs> about this to connect with another brother, man. I appreciate it. Uh, first Me of too. all, what does manhood look like today in today's culture, man? Because it's sometimes the sisters be coming for us, and I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah man. So help I think what, out. honestly, I, so if we're talking um, the black community, I think what what we're seeing today is the effects of um, what was going on when you and I were younger, right? The households, the man being taken out of the households whether it was, you know, the 80s crime where they were taking men out, throwing them in jail, um, the 90s crime bill. I think what we're seeing now is the fact that, you know, 70% of Black homes are single parent homes or no, pardon me, are led by single mothers. I think we're now seeing what that has brought up. We have a whole bunch of young men out here um, and some grown men, but young men out here who don't necessarily have the direction and who are just kind of free flowing. They're going off of what they've heard, what they've seen. They're letting their insecurities run them in a lot of ways. And so we're at the state of manhood for me is in a crisis mode. And I feel like it's partially because there weren't men around to really teach what that even looked like, to give us even a skeleton of what it looked like, right? Because manhood can look a little different, but there are definitely some standard kind of pillars, right? Integrity, being a man of your word, you know, um, having foresight and thought and really being able to assess situations, come up with solutions, like being solution focused. And I think nowadays we're in a space where so many brothers are insecure because of the lack of example, that they're just in a space of constant, almost insecurity, panic. There's no trust anywhere there um, because relationships and turmoil with mothers was kind of crazy, myself included. A lot of us are taking that out on our significant others or just women in general. Um, and then when we're talking about even um, when it comes to, to an extent, like the workforce, like we're not shooting as high as we need to, right? We always hear about these great success stories and don't get me wrong, brothers are out here working. They're making it happen. But so many brothers that I've learned are just like, well, I'm always gonna be at this place in my life where I'm making $40,000 a year. 
and so forth. And what I want to do and what I feel like you're doing as well is we're showing brothers like, no, you can you can push back all of that and we can shoot higher. We can reach, you know, higher levels, things that I didn't think were possible when I was coming up, but I've now achieved at 40 years old. And I'm like, oh, wow, OK, we can really do this stuff. And so that's why I feel like it's our duty. My dad wasn't around like that. And even if he was, he wasn't really a great example of what manhood looked like because he ran from responsibility, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And my relationship with my mom was tumultuous because she's working multiple jobs, you know, running around like a chicken with her head cut off. So there was a lot of anger at my dad that I had to kind of take the brunt of, right? And so, so many of us have these types of stories. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it's our job for those of us who have come out of that to be able to say, nah, bro, it's cool. I got you. Let me show you exactly the things that I did. You take from that what you will, mm -hmm. but you can definitely build yourself up. It's going to be harder than you thought because it was definitely harder. The world taught me manhood. You feel me? So, mm -hmm. and I'm right. I know you feel me. So it's like, it, it's harder than you might think it is, but it's doable and you can do it with support. Mm -hmm. So I kind of feel like we're in the stage where there are a lot of young men out here who have no idea what manhood even is, what it looks like. They're getting examples from social media or their direct environments. And that's not always good. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's oftentimes bad. And so I feel like we're just at that space now where we just have to step in and really help them out and help them build. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. Because in today's culture, man, I think relationships overall are in in a state of emergency um yeah yeah right i think overall i think because we don't have that blueprint and i always joke around and say you well let me just say this real quick that you can only mimic what you see right like people you know oh i want to be a millionaire but do you know any millionaires or have you been anybody who know how to manage money or things of that nature okay. remember we used to play basketball on the court and we'll be like, uh, you know, uh, uh, well, I won't even say LeBron because we're a little, you know, we're a little old <laughs> now, you know what I'm saying? But we'll be like Jordan okay. or, or, or Drexler, you know, or right, you know, right. whoever, right? But the only reason why we said that is because we were able to see what they can do on the court. And we right. were trying to mimic that. So right. how can we try to mimic a healthy marriage and we never see it or we just watching stuff on reality right. TV thinking that it's going to be this way? Come to find mm -hmm. out it's not like that way. And now you're into divorce. Yep. I was one of those brothers who thought that it was like gonna be like a Cosby show. <laughs> like with the day I got married, that there was gonna be the switch and then things was just gonna be easy. And I remember when we got married and it didn't happen. And I was genuinely I was like, huh. <laughs> it's like well, the Cosby then. show. <laughs> right. So what do I do now? And I really just, you know, reading books talking to people, mm -hmm. you know, thankfully a lot of folks in my circle are married mm -hmm. and we were honestly, a lot of us just figured it out together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I see too, even the, the respect that I see that guys have for you, man. So that also gives me mm -hmm. a little more thinking like, okay, that's good that we got good brothers out here. Right. Not just, you right. know, right. that actually have respect for you because you walk in, in honesty and integrity. So I appreciate that, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what is what does what is leadership like and and how important are mentors? Uh, have you have you had mentors like what did that look like for you? Because I know you had to try to navigate this manhood. Mm -hmm. but, uh, does the two go hand in hand as far as like leadership and mentorship? Like, how does this work? Kind of give me a little rundown. It's interesting. I don't have mentors. And it's so weird because I'm so, I'm a mentor for so many. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. I've tried to get mentors. It just for some reason has never happened. But what mm -hmm. I have done is I've had a lot of experiences with people. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of conversations and I've taken pieces and really been able to bring it together. And so I'm also the type of person who I take direction very well, but I also give direction well. So I'm always put in leadership type positions and work environments and so on. So for me, leadership is just being solution focused, like understanding that no matter what the problem is, you know, taking it on, taking it apart, analyzing it, figuring out how we need to solve it and then moving forward. And I think that's really the key for us right now, because what I find often, especially when I have these conversations, is that brothers are like, well, we can't do that because this is some this hard stuff. And I'm like, OK, so what are we going to do? And so many of them are just kind of perplexed because they're not usually faced in scenarios where they 
are asked to come up with solutions, right? It's like, this is the problem. It's a very employee mindset. It's like, this is the problem. Somebody else has to fix it because that's not my job kind mm-hmm. of thing. Mm-hmm. And what we have to understand is actually that is our job, right? Because if we want the leadership, if we want, well, not even the leadership, if we want the respect that so many of us are demanding in our households and in our community, you have to be a leader to demand that kind of respect. And leadership doesn't mean that you're at the front in the pulpit telling everybody what to do. But leadership is being able to take that direction and apply it and bring others along with you, right? And so there's so many different facets to it. There's so many different roles that we can each play, but we have to get in the game. And brothers don't even want to get in the game because they're afraid, because they haven't seen the examples. Exactly. They haven't seen the examples like you mentioned earlier, right? They ain't see Jordan. They ain't see him shooting in the gym. So they're like, I don't even know what's going on. And that's why I feel like people like us who are having these conversations and hosts in our spaces, it's important for us to just continue doing that work so we can know, like, no, you have these resources. Mm-hmm. So, how, how do you, uh, how, what do you, what do you feel is one quality or one trait that you have that attracts men to you? Because to me, when a man have respect for another man, to me, that's the ultimate. Like, what is it one trait that you have that really you think that men can really gravitate towards you? I think the authenticity has pretty much always been the piece that, um, because I don't, I speak very plainly from the standpoint, like, I'm quick to be like, and this is how I messed up. And most people aren't willing to do that and to talk about that. And so when I I lead with that, because I want people to know, like, yo, I'm, I'm just like you. I'm not perfect. I was just in a room this morning talking about how when my wife and I got together, I used to project all my stuff onto her and I wanted her to fix it, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm happily married, but it ain't always been peaches. You know, I was doing some toxic stuff too. And I think once I start really talking and admitting those things from gay, and then I show genuine interest in others and what they're doing and what's going on with them. I mean, I've heard it from so many men over the years, like nobody's ever asked me that. Nobody's ever cared enough. And I always care enough because I want to know. If I don't want to know, I won't ask. You know what I mean? So if I'm asking, it's not like coffee table talk. Like I genuinely want to know what's going on with you. How are things? And so a lot of brothers really appreciate that and they can tell that I'm genuine with it. And that's honestly how I've I've always been like that my whole life because nobody did that to me when I was young. Nobody asked me how I was doing. What's going on with you? How are you feeling? How are you feeling about this point in your life? Nobody. Damn. So it's important to me to ask other people that so they don't feel like nobody cares. Like, no, people care. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So what's going on? What's up? And then that typically opens the door definitely for the next level of respect, you know, even with how we met, mm-hmm. you know, being in the room, listening to you talk. I'm like, I got to connect with this brother because yeah. he's on this stuff, you yeah. know, and being genuine with it. And then real recognize real, I think, as well, too. I think that has a big part in it. For sure. Oh. Did you ask? Oh, yeah. No, I'm sorry. I was like, you asked me a question. I just oh, asked. Yeah. Started mm-hmm. talking. But I did answer it in the beginning. So y'all yeah. can rewind to see that. <laughs> no, you're good, man. I Man, I appreciate that. Because I think vulnerability is is key. Yeah. Because every, we live in a social media age where everybody has it together. Everybody's perfect. Mm-hmm. Everybody's flawless. Mm-hmm. And your transparency and things of that nature, it does kind of bring, it brings humanity to, to me. Absolutely. You know, mm-hmm. and I think I think we need that because we we mm-hmm. we dealing with a lot of things, man. And if we don't have that safe space, it comes out bad in other ways. Yep, that's a fact. Yeah, because if we're not hurting ourselves, we're hurting somebody else. Exactly. And I think that's the piece that I didn't learn until I started hurting somebody else emotionally. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you realize how powerful your emotions are as men. You know, like if I'm in a bad mood, the house is in a bad mood. And I didn't realize I had that power until my wife was like, what's going on? Like, if, you, if something's going on, you got to, I'm like, no, I'm just, you know, whatever. And she's like, nah, it's affecting all of us. So like, what's up? And I was like, dang, my energy really, I really am the king of the castle, if you will. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, so it's so crazy. I love that. <laughs> oh, I just met. It's I mean, so true. I'm- Oh, and I just, you know, and, and it took me years to realize that myself, because I think a lot of times we grew up in a happy wife, happy life kind of thing. And we do everything yeah. we just try to make her happy. It's all about her happiness. It has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with you. It's a lie. Right. 
but we have to, but we we do, we do set that tone because whatever energy yep. we putting in the house is what she's gonna multiply. Exactly. Ooh. <laughs> I might have to take that one, brother. I ain't gonna even lie to you. I'm gonna say hey. it to your face now. Hey. Hey, you can <laughs> okay. that. I you need to. Man. That was so good. That's the energy she's gonna multiply. Cause and, yes. you know, like the old heads always say, man. You know, a woman she gonna multiply whatever you give her. You know, you give her a seed, yeah. she give you a baby. Yeah. You give her, you know, some money to get it. Mm-hmm. She can get a house. You know, she gonna multiply yeah. your money. She so whatever energy, and we have that power, but I don't think men realize that. Yeah, we don't. We have no idea. Dang. We only recognize our power in physicality and mm. strength, you know, and fighting and yeah, and more like arduous kind of situations or conflict versus just the everyday. Yeah. You know, the power in our voice. Man. Now, what if we would would fight for our marriages, our relationships like we do on the street? What if we what if we put that energy behind our family? <laughs> what if we put the energy that we put to making sure we're watching Thursday night football, Sunday night football, fantasy? What if we put that meticulous energy that we put into fantasy football into our relationship? Come on, man. Because nobody ever wants to that. hear that part, though. Come on now. Nobody <laughs> ever wants to hear that part, though. Everyone's just like, oh, man. You're just... No, I'm serious. Put man, that same that's... energy. See, I knew this was going to be good. I know. <laughs> I knew this was going to be good. Like, Let me get off my soapbox. <laughs> hey, that's why I had to have you on, man. Uh, let's talk about self-control because I heard about this. Uh, well, I've always been a big fan of self-control, you know, because yeah. I think that's that's one thing that we have control over as individuals. You know, yeah. people, you know, people, he made me do this. She made me do that. No, you got to have some kind of self-control. Right. Um, and I, I, the sad thing about this, Matt, is we teach our boys to knock them all down growing up and then one day they get married they don't turn off like people just think like oh okay oh oh so i'm just supposed to be a one woman now but i've been knocking them down for years can you talk about the importance of of self-control and and what does that even look like how 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 can you put that into practicality every day sean this is so crazy i was talking about this this morning i'm like if you've been lying to get you know in women's or to be intimate with women your whole life and haven't had to exercise that self-control, why do you feel like it'll automatically translate to self-control if you get in a monogamous relationship and that turns into marriage when you haven't been doing anything to prepare for that? That doesn't even make sense, right? But we all do it because I did it. Me too. You know what I mean? And I'm like, I've been thinking to myself like, what exactly was I thinking? Now, thankfully, I didn't have any issues with infidelity or whatever, but I had issues with, I was still lying to my wife, like I used to lie to women over stupid stuff because I was just used to lying to women. Mm-hmm. And so to your point, I think that self-control is so important on so many levels, right? And whether you're talking about work, because we have self-control when we're at work, because how many times we wanted to curse out our boss, but you don't. <laughs> you don't, because you want your job, right? right? And so you exercise it there. You exercise it um, sometimes if you're in a sporting event or some, any type of extracurricular type of scenario. But then for some reason, when it comes back to the home, home base, the self-control often goes out the window. And I guess it's because it's the place where we feel like we can let our hair down and relax. But what you have to remember is that self-control has to become part of who you are as a whole. So you're exercising it everywhere. And that's just growing up. I mean, that's just, that's life. That's manhood. That's woman. That's all of it. You know what I mean? And so when it comes to like what you were mentioning, you have to, the smarter way to do it versus how you and I did it Mm -hmm. is to start practicing self-control, start practicing you know, just being, just integrity, mm-hmm. you know? Like I was saying earlier in the space when I was speaking, if you know that you're even considering something like marriage, like it's something you're looking for, start moving in that space now. Connect yourself with people who move like that. Now that you have opportunities like social media, imagine if we had something like social media. Like, come on now. I'm like, you can type on Instagram or type in a hashtag and find out. You can type in self-control on Instagram and find <laughs> yeah. so Instagram many, comes up. listen, and so many pages, so many posts, so all of these things. We didn't have that back in the day. We had to actually go to a library, okay? Big tech bust out a whole encyclopedia, maybe. 
a look of self-control. And then what's the encyclopedia really does? It's like, it's just so different. So you know, now folks, it's like, like, what is he talking about? Elaborate. I know, I know. I'm elaborate. sorry, God. Encyclopedias are books. Books are, we'll talk about that next time. <laughs> but my point is, before Google, that's what we need. But it's like, if you're not practicing that, you can't expect it to come naturally because it doesn't. It takes practice. And like I was saying, we use it in so many different aspects of our lives. What we need to learn is that it needs to be across all parts of who we are. And then, honestly, it's helped me with fatherhood because I didn't see self-control even when I was a kid. So I've had to learn that with my um, daughters, like stress me out. I'm the grown up. Control yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like be in control of your emotions. They are the kids. And so it's such an important lesson because it's something that I've learned and it's making me a better parent mm-hmm. when it's all said and done. Because I don't have to fly off the handle. I don't have to yell all crazy, angry. I have self-control. That doesn't mean I don't get frustrated. Yeah. But what I do do is I also walk away if I know it's about to be too much because I'm grown. I'm the adult. And it takes a lot to get to that place of accountability, but you just have. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Uh, yeah, practice makes perfect, right? You know. Yeah, exactly. You can't even get on the football field unless you do your reps. You know, if you 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 you, you, you know you got to put in them reps. You got to keep doing it over and over. You ain't about to get into a stunt lineup until your tail prove to me that you're good to go and you get better by reps. So I I love that that you you know you got it every day. Every day. You're not getting that promotion at work just because you're showing up every day. No, my boy, you got to put in that work. That's it. That's man talk right there. Come on now. You're an (laughs) entrepreneur. You know, you can't be an entrepreneur without putting in that work. Man, come on. Because if I don't show up, nobody ain't going to show up. (laughs) (laughs) And that's just where we are. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's talk about this this COVID stuff, man. There's so much going on. I want to really specifically talk about uh, from the relational standpoint. And yeah. I was doing some homework the other day, and they're showing like stats from housework and childcare are still falling on a woman disproportionately. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, how can we fix this? Because there are some people that work from home, you know, but yeah. there's still people that that's going out in the in the field to work. Um, so what can I, and I guess really towards men what can men do to help this so first i want to say like if you do the research and i found this in um in newsweek magazine and a couple of other resources firstly i would like to say that black men are the most involved men and parents demographic in this yep. country right now period yep. point blank yep. higher than everybody you can think of yep. so first i would like to to us because i feel like we definitely need to hear those positive types of stats Thank um you. that doesn't mean that we can't improve right and so what I will def- absolutely say is I think that we have to understand that we have to maybe be a little more creative because women had to, women were the largest portion leaving the workforce because typically domestic responsibilities are set on women because of the wealth gap. It makes more sense for the men to stay working because typically they make more money even if it's in the same field doing the same work, right? Mm-hmm. I think what my wife and I ended up doing, which is kind of like how we run our marriage anyway, we split a lot of the responsibility and we communicate openly. And if anything needs to change, we communicate about it. So I'm getting girls ready in the morning. I'm putting girls, we both putting the girls bed at night. We're both doing, you know what I mean? Like we both do our equal part because having one person do it and we're both working, it just doesn't make sense. I think as men also, what we have to do is be a little more creative. So my wife didn't have to quit her job because hers was um, virtual. But for those um, fellows whose wives did quit, Something that's easy is helping them come up with a side hustle that they could do virtually. You know what I mean? So now you still feel whole. You don't feel like your role has been reduced at all. If you're somebody, if you're a woman who enjoyed working. Mm -hmm. So then there's a self-fulfillment that's able to continue or come back. And that's a huge piece because a lot of women felt unfulfilled. I've been reduced to only being a mom. I'm a stay-at-home mom now. That's not what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And so there's nothing that we as men can do that's going to fill that gap. Mm-hmm. outside of showing that we care and that we can also come up with solutions and ideas. Mm-hmm. And so sitting down with your wife, hey, being that you can't work, you know, full time going into the office anymore, maybe we can come up with a hustle that you can have. And as we're sharing the responsibilities, you're still able to use that brain power, use those degrees, use your creativity 
bring in income and feel like you are a part of this family in a way that's not just for motherhood. And it doesn't diminish my motherhood in any way. I think that motherhood just has a different meaning nowadays than it did back in the day. And so I think as men, like you said, if we're creative, help our wives be creative, help them fulfill that peace that they're looking for on top of all of us taking on the responsibilities and having a true partnership in the household. I mean, if nothing else, that's a great place to start and then take it from there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Partnership. That's huge because mm-hmm. I heard a guy say the other day, <clears throat> he said uh, this this girl he was uh, dating or they were living together or whatever. He said she had me doing women's chores. He said I was ironing clothes. I was folding clothes. So hearing him say this and it was funny because the lady pointed out, she said, why does that have to be a woman's job? Because mm-hmm. she has to work just like you do. So like you exactly. said, exactly y'all got to work together. And I think right. some guys I mean, are still in that mindset. I mean, if it's a woman's job, then let it be a woman's job full time and she doesn't have to work at all. Preach. Brothers ain't trying to hear that. Brother, they like, uh, <laughs> brothers ain't trying to hear that part, though. They ain't trying to hear that part. They like, they like nah. nah, what you talking about? Nah, nah, we both got to work. Well, then that's not a woman's chore. Come on. Because we both got to be at the office by five, by nine, or eight, mm-hmm. or whatever time. So now it's everybody's job. Because when it was a woman's job, that's all she was doing. She wasn't get, leaving out the house commuting. So come on, we got to stop it. We got to stop it. Man. We got to be honest, man. Yeah, man, because folks be be capping out here. I'm like, stop. Listen, <laughs> and it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> come on, y'all. Man, you talking real. And because I was going to ask about finances and stuff, about finances being mm-hmm. a problem, and, and do you think yeah. that it comes from maybe money mismanagement? And I even look at... Um, where are you located, Matt? What's where are you in? I'm in Maryland. I'm in the DMV. Right oh, okay, so you in Maryland? So are are do you have a, a heavy workforce out there as far as like people oh, hiring? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, because yeah. out here in Texas, everybody's hiring. I don't see how people mm-hmm. are not working. Honestly, <laughs> it's yeah, it's hard because and then so out here in the DMV, the government is huge. Right, obviously for obvious reasons. So the government employs most of the population out here. And then on top of that, you have the customers or the clients who work for the government who do like all the ancillary ancillary um, jobs or whatnot. So there's always a lot of jobs and things that are going on out here. Um, I think the issue is money management, like you said. Literally, that's the answer. People don't know how to manage their money. And it doesn't matter what demographic you come from. Some are better than others. You know, obviously, but for the most part, especially Americans, like we're just not good at it. People would much rather front for all types of, you know, people, social media. You know, you want to go on that trip so bad, and it's between your rent or the mortgage and that trip. And people are like, well, I could get my landlord to give me an extension, and they're going on that trip. And it's just the truth. I mean, it's the truth. The debt of this country lets you know that people have so much credit debt credit cards. I mean, I've never even thought about, I mean, we had a credit card debt that got up to like $5,000 and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> you know? And then to find out that people have thirty and forty and $50,000 in credit card debt, I'm just like, it's real. Man. How? It's real. Would, you know what I mean? And it's no disrespect to anyone. It's just like, that is one of the main reasons that COVID was also so stressful. Because if we all managed our money well, mm. then we'd be fine. You know what I mean? Losing the job wouldn't really be that big of a deal because we'd all have that six to 10 months saved for the mortgage or the rent, for the food, for the bills, and we ain't have it, right? Yep. Because we all manage our money, right? And I don't, I used to be the same one, trust me. Now we have it now because Mm -hmm. I've been so broke, Mm -hmm. made such poor decisions (laughs) that I'm like, I don't want to do that. But I mean, for the most part, and I'm 40 now. So, you know what I mean? I can't even blame anybody because that was me for the longest as well. So it's just, we just have to be better. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. we have to. I agree because, uh, and I always tell people, it's not how much you make, it's how much you spend. And mm-hmm. uh, funny story, real quick, I was, yeah. uh, went to to the, uh, went to go see my eye doctor the other day. I'm getting older, I need glasses, all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> Welcome you know, to the family, brother. 
<laughs> I got glasses. Oh, okay, cool. All right, that's what's up. I don't feel too bad. Man, <laughs> he's getting ready to leave, and somehow uh, we end up talking about groceries or something. I don't know. But he was yeah. Yeah, because my wife, she shops at Whole Foods. Now, this guy's a whole doctor. Like, he making bread. He's like, yeah, my wife shops at Whole Foods. And he's like, I love the food. But they, he's like, it just costs so much money to shop there. Like, I, I'm always thinking of ways I can cut corners and, and save. You know, that's 20 cents cheaper at this place. This dude is a doctor telling me all this stuff. Okay. That's fun talking about. Yeah, so that tells me I'm like he must be very frugal <coughs> with all the money mm-hmm. that he make. Very frugal, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, and I'm that's just thinking, true. Wow. So and so, how much more? The, you know, the average guy maybe making thirty five, forty a year. He ain't even thinking right. of that. He at Whole Foods too, right next to you. Doesn't make sense. It makes no sense. I'm sorry. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Like my wife loves Whole Foods because um some of like their lunch stuff and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And sure, it's like a special treat. But we had the regular grocery store until, until, <laughs> okay? Yeah, right. And that's just what it is. And it's not like, you know, it's like, oh my God, the regular grocery store. Like, mm-hmm. no. Yeah. You know, we all just, we got to live within our means. For sure. for sure. I totally agree, man. Well, let's talk about, uh, you know, let's talk about sex. Uh, especially with this COVID thing. Um, mm-hmm. Complaining of familiarity. Mm-hmm. You know, you cooped up in the house. And you just like, oh my God. <laughs> you, only can, you only can turn over a pancake so many times, you know, before it's done. You're like, my God. <laughs> my God. <laughs> Not to say, you know, when Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, brother. You speaking real. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. So what what can couples do, man, in times like these to to keep the the because Matt, you've been married for some years, and I'm not saying that you know yeah. you gotta let us behind the veil, but just mm-hmm. What what can couples do, man, to, to keep it spicy? Because after so many years, you do, you know, especially like you said yeah. earlier, like we talked about, because a lot of times as men, we've had so many experiences, shoot, women too, yeah. with, dif- with different people. Yeah. You know, how, how do you keep it focused on one person and, and, and to keep it fresh? Like, man, what do you do? I think being open, being honest, being open to new things, I think has been key. There are things I've talked to my wife about that, you know, back in the day, I would have been like, I'll never bring that up. I wouldn't even want her to, you know what I mean? And now I'm like, hey, what do you think about this? And the same thing for her. She'll be like, hey, what do you think about that? Mm. Um, And so being willing to try stuff, I think one of the reasons we were able to make it through COVID, um, because I got a lot of friends with COVID babies, so we know what they were doing. Um, Mm. They don't have the babies now. Um, I got uh, COVID babies. oh, Oh, yeah? Yeah, man, I got two. Yeah, man, I, I'm, I'm okay. Transparent moment, real quick. Don't want to let yeah. you lose your thought. Uh, for oh, those yeah. who might not know, you know, maybe some of your listeners. Or, um, yeah. So of course, you know, I remarried, and yeah. I remarried at forty. But then forty at forty one, my son came. Mm. Then at forty two, my other son came. Oh, wow. Yeah. So why? So after so during COVID, you know, these past yeah. two years, because I have a uh, uh, we have three total, but we have yeah. the, the two year old and then we have a one year old. So I'm literally doing this all over again. Yeah, I have are. an 18 year old daughter. So from my God previous year. Yeah. Okay. So okay. when she came home after uh, delivery, I went and got a vasectomy. I was like, I'm, I can't. Me too. Oh, okay. Well, welcome Best to the decision club. I ever made. Yeah. Brother, listen. Okay. After my second one, my wife, I was like, look, I'm over this. And she was like, I'm over this too. <laughs> and I was like, and I'm not trying to take care of you for like eight weeks to get your tube tied when I can go 20 minutes down the street. Okay. Unselfish. And that's what I did. Unselfishness. Yeah. yeah. Well, I... no, there was some selfishness in there because I didn't really feel like taking care of her. I'm serious. I was like, why, why you got to go through this major surgery? Now I got to be home, making sure you got, I got to walk you to the, I, no, 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 no. But I can just literally go 15 minutes later, I walked out of there. <laughs> Me too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Listen, like, are we doing it like that, man? Um, and so to answer your question before, yeah. what we also did that helped us get through a lot was we gave each other so much a long time. Like, firstly, like, we didn't work in the same office space in the house. We didn't, hang on each other every second because now I can't leave the house with her, especially during the lockdown when the time restrictions, like we had major time restrictions up there mm-hmm. in Maryland. 
So we really allowed each other to like other ends of the house, you know, for the day. Smart. You know, and so when we did come together at night, it was, I'm not going to say it was new every time. We're not going to lie. I had sex every day. But that didn't happen. <laughs> However, it definitely was good to be like away from each other. And I think that's one of the things that kept it, you know, like I might go outside for a walk. She might stay here. Or she might go outside for a walk. Run to the, or we doing all these different things to make sure that the, we still had that kind of distance to the heart grow fonder piece while still being in the same household. And that was very helpful. But I also got to be honest, man, my wife and I love being around each other. And so that's the only reason why we made it. Because if we didn't like being around each other, we would have been like all those people who are now divorcing when they found out that they have actually having to be together every day was not, they didn't really necessarily like the person they were with. Mm. And so that's really like the biggest piece. Do you enjoy this person? Like enjoy them. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Okay. So so what what make you two really um, make you gel? Like what is it that mm. kind of like your, I won't say secret sauce, but kind of more yeah. like what, what, what keep you both interested in each other for that long? Because people you know mm -hmm. laughter that's yeah. the first thing that comes to mind we laugh hard every day we are both smart alex um my wife is hilarious that's one of the reasons why i was so attracted to her in the beginning because i had never dated a woman that was funny yeah. um and prior to that outside of like some of the women in my family you know i'm ashamed to admit it but i didn't really ever think women were that funny and it was probably because of the way that i was interacting with them prior to meeting with my wife you know it was really for like a for one thing yeah. so yeah you know and so i'm not interacting with women like that and when i am they're like yeah kind of funny but not really i mean when my wife and i listen she is she could be on comedy jam and it's hard to not enjoy being around somebody because somebody's funny and she got quick one-liners you know what i'm saying oh so and she's it's just, witty. listen it's like she speaks my language man she's funnier than me and that's hard for me to admit <laughs> but i'm a funny guy but and she just is and so it's easy to spend time with somebody that you can just laugh with all day it really makes a lot of things like even after we have disagreements or whatnot you know and we come back together afterwards and it's still kind of you know that awkward space yeah. somebody gonna crack a joke at some point in time and not trying to cover up because we deal with all the issues that we have we deal with it we talk about it like we make sure we good mm -hmm. we don't gloss over nothing mm -hmm. Because we both can't, we both don't have poker faces. Like if I'm upset about something, you know I'm upset. I know you're upset. So like, let's just do it. Gotcha. And so being able to just laugh together, you know, awesome. and just hold each other down. Mm -hmm. That's really the main piece, man. And then it just brings everything else together, you know, and it helps that she's gorgeous. So that makes it very easy to jump on her, you know, that's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, that's really... That's really what it is. We just enjoy each other's personality for real. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah, that's a huge. Mm, great traits to have, man. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Laughter yeah. is medicine for the soul, for real. Yeah, man. Yeah. Especially when things are rough, you know. Man, listen. Man, Matt, this has been an awesome show. Man, we could talk for, for hours. We definitely got to do this again, man. I know. Man. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's, I'm going to start doing the show as well. So you will be coming oh. on there. So oh. I'll prepare yourself now. Oh. And I want to thank you for what you do. Mm. Because it is not every day that you have men who have been through what you've been through and then are willing to come back out there and say, yeah, it didn't work out, you know, the one mm -hmm. time. But that doesn't mean that we can't do it again. You don't got to throw in the towel. Mm -hmm. You just step back, reassess, make better decisions, check your vetting process, and move forward. And that's what you did. Thanks, And man. you got two beautiful kids out of it and an amazing wife. For sure. You know, and it's just, and even hearing you say, like, you know, you guys have done therapy together and you're doing the work to make sure that your marriage continues to stay together. My wife and I are in couples therapy. We're in individual therapy. Like, listen, we trying to do long haul here. And that's the only way it works. I'll be telling people, like, you take your car to the shop, don't you? When you at work, don't you got to take training classes? Are you still using that knowledge from when you got your degree 15, 20 years ago? No. Man. You got to stay up to date. But when the people get in relationships, everybody's like, yeah. I got it. Yeah, right? I'm good. 
And then you came from a broken household. Any, well, not broken, but you came from like a household that was not functioning mm-hmm. healthy. Mm-hmm. But you got it. Mm-hmm. You got it. Yeah, <laughs> Just, right. Isn't it funny how marriage is the only thing? It's, the it's only. easy, easy to get in, hard to get out of. You know, and and. It's just as simple as going to Vegas and letting uh, Elvis marry you. And, Come on now. And, and you're on your way. You're on your way. Getting married is easy. That's what I try to tell people. I'm like, we're having all these conversations about how to get in a relationship. Jesus, y'all don't even know how to stay in one. <laughs> Listen. Okay, we still, at, we still at home base. We ain't even got the first base yet. Getting married is simple. Like you just said, Elvis can do it. And Elvis been dead for about 50 years. And he can marry you today. Uh, Tupac can marry you, anybody. Tupac. <laughs> we got the hologram can marry Like, listen. Hologram. <laughs> hologram pop can marry you. Like, but we really just have to make sure people understand. You just have to do the work. And you have done the work, brother. And so I. that's why I love how you move and how you operate. Because you remind people, like, just because you made a mistake once doesn't mean that it can't, you can't turn it around. And it doesn't mean that there aren't ups and downs of anything. So I just appreciate what you're doing, man. Community Thanks. For real. Thanks, man. Absolutely. I appreciate you. Well, let the Brave Hearts community know how they can get in touch with you. Give us all your, your social media yeah. stuff, email. Absolutely. Y'all can find me on all social media platforms as King Midas CH. That's King K I N G Midas M I D as in dog A S. CH, Instagram, Facebook. I don't really do Twitter like that, but I'll be on Twitter as well. And just tap in with me. Join Clubhouse. If you join Clubhouse, you can definitely find me easily on there. I have a club called the Midas Touch. That's also on Facebook. And let's, let's really do this. Let's, let's get this Black family together. I'm not even going to say back together because, you know, we've had such turmoil in the past. Like, let's bring it together and then let's move forward, man. Let's make it happen. So thank you for the space. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Absolutely. man. I appreciate it. Well, Brave Hearts community, you heard it here. Make sure that you connect with Matt because the guy is awesome. And uh, we need this guy on a bigger platform so folks can hear what he have to say because uh, he's definitely out here helping folks and changing lives. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you're watching this, if you are listening to this via podcast, um, Apple podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review. You know my style. If I suck, give me one star. Let me know how I'm doing. Talk to me. If I'm doing, give me five stars. If I'm doing great, talk to me. It's all good. I don't need to five stars. Yeah. Five stars. Five stars. Five stars. Five stars. Okay. Especially this episode. Yeah, right. For sure. So you heard it, Brave Hearts. Make sure that you give this podcast five stars. This is Sean Heineman here at It's Scary to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. Take care, people.